Even though the Bible was written a very long time ago, it has many stories and parables in it that can help us to make sense of the world that we live in. The Bible can also help us to understand how we are feeling and how we can cope with these feelings. We are beginning a new series of videos called God Cares When I Am Afraid. And over the next few weeks, we are going to tell you some of the story of David. David is remembered as one of the greatest earthly kings, and you may have heard about his brave fight against the giant Goliath. But we will hear, even as a brave and great king, David often felt afraid. We are going to learn more about David, but we need to start at the beginning of his story. So let's go into the book to find out how David was chosen to be king. The people of Israel demanded they have a king to lead them. God explained through his prophet, a man named Samuel, that a king would take their sons and turn them into soldiers, would take their daughters to be servants. A king would take the best of their fields, vineyards and olive groves for himself, as well as their grain and wine, and would make them become his slaves. But the people of Israel were not put off by this. We want to be like all the other nations. We want a king, they said. So God gave them a king, a tall, handsome man named Saul. Saul certainly looked the part. And the people of Israel were really pleased. But Saul did not have a good heart. And he soon forgot that it was God who had chosen him to be Israel's king. Saul stopped obeying God. And so God's prophet Samuel had to tell him that because he had rejected God, God would reject Saul as king over Israel. God then sent Samuel to Bethlehem to find a man named Jesse, because God had chosen one of Jesse's sons to be the new king. Samuel was afraid. If Saul finds out, he will kill me. But God told Samuel the new king would be someone who loved God, trusted God, and would obey God. So Samuel, who loved God, trusted God, and obeyed God, did as God had asked him, and went to Bethlehem and found Jesse. When Samuel arrived at Jesse's house, he saw Eliab, who was Jesse's oldest son. He looked at him and thought to himself, this must be the man God has chosen. But God said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his height. This is not the man I have chosen. Saul looked the part, but he was not a good king. I do not look at the things people look at. You can only see what a person is like on the outside, but I look at their heart. So, Jess, uh, so Samuel told Jesse to call his next son, but God told Samuel, no. So then it was the turn of son number three, but again, God told Samuel, no. And so it went on until seven of Jesse's sons had stood before Samuel and God had rejected all of them. Samuel then asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Well, said Jesse, there is the youngest son, but he is out looking after the sheep. Send for him, said Samuel. So Jesse got a servant to go and get David from the field. And as soon as he appeared, God told Samuel, anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel poured special oil onto David's head as a sign that one day he would be king. So far so good, right? But did you spot where the problem might arise? Saul was still king, even though God had chosen who would be king after him. Normally a king's son inherits the throne, but God had rejected Saul and his sons, and instead chose David to be the next king of Israel. Do you think Saul would be willing to just give up the power and wealth of being a king without a fight? 
As David's story unfolds, we're going to find out about what Saul did to try and get rid of David. Things that made David very afraid. Yet God chose David and knew David's heart. God knew David would trust him, even when he was afraid, and God would protect him. Sometimes we can be afraid, and that is very normal. We're afraid because we don't know the future, and sometimes even the bits we do know are scary, and we can't avoid them. For example, exams, or tests, or going to the dentist. Even visiting that scary aunt. We are not big enough to overcome them, and so we get scared. Christians believe that God is big enough to deal with everything. So when we put our trust in God to look after us, in the same way that he looked after David, we don't need to be afraid anymore. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, please say Amen at the end after me. Dear Lord, thank you that you are bigger than anything we may be afraid of, and that you always want what is best for us. Amen.